I want to begin with selections from a project. A collaboration with C.A. Conrad entitled The City Real and Imagined. Philadelphia. Noun or imaginary noun? One. Geographic location. Two. Brotherly love. Three. Geographic location of otherly love. Four. The real and imagined. Divine Lorraine and oh, the father is present. They face each other in the two empty yellow chairs in the lobby. The table is set for their ghosts in the kitchen. Elephants smile to the left, to the right. Lotus grows in this fifth pocket. Sinatra sings from somewhere. There's gold in my stool, I know it. This is a brick, be rich. Conrad read Annie Sprinkle's tarot. She heard every word he said. Her body, her temple. Doors open. A Buick with a mermaid on the panel conjures paint jobs that float on the ocean. The trunk reads, art is all around me. Sing in sprinkle voice. We are told in so many ways that song is not enough. The door of the trestle in negates inclinations toward the asinine. No, 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 of any kind. No and no and... Between the woman who is mixing cement with her eyes and the customers alone in the bar, it's hard to call out who the penetrables are, except there are none and everyone. Big hands wring linen from roofs, ring rain down on these faces. Big hands pave magic on dreams, these days colored in fish parts. Chinatown's arch was designed to bring fortune. There are combination shops everywhere. The video store slash bridal shop. The soap and watch store. There's a root in the market that's good for our lungs. I crave okra because I want to breathe the vegetables, the money in the air. So the attempt to reduce us to seductive packaging has failed. Now what? In each body rests every sin of the world that translates as shots off the mark. I am here to be new to the city that birthed me and new to this case that has carried me through. Red petals on a red rug blur the dialectic, but bread doesn't usually come in primary colors. Meanwhile, here is a theater for the archivist to test their nerve. Stilted figures play act massacres. Slick effigies return as mock enterprise models burning before a crowd of silent witness. An acting troupe addresses ethnic cleansing in the waning nights of the fringe. Of course they talk about genocide. They're Polish. The show ends. Everything burns. A new set is built for tomorrow. Great and greater Satans follow our movements from behind the glass that houses the wooden shoe. The smell of warring fundamentals that cook themselves is all over the magazines. Their pain, our pain, I thought I might be they. Do they know they might be me? Nothing says terror like a boy with a black eye. I recognize the cover photo of Clamor magazine as the work of Greg Fuchs. It's an elegant portrait of his elderly neighbor, Dolores. I know I'm too young for her. Will I be forever? We get our vitamin D in the sunlight frozen in this absurd act of urban planning. Also read as big kids taking a walk. Conrad lets the water ice girl pick his flavor. I poke a hole in the cup bottom, leaking mine. Lug ice around long enough, it will become liquid. An essential return tempts me to take a nap on the sugar water pavement. A portrait of a rebel leader double-crossed in rugged terrain is captioned, Remember, and I remember again 
that everything has an anniversary, like today. A wish is caught off the milkweed and <laughs> blown away. Uh, we're happy to be here at the Philadelphia Cleft Club of Jazz and Performing Arts. It's a community-based organization, and we're going to be talking a lot about that tonight. Uh, it's known as the house that jazz built and was founded as uh, Local 274, the Black Musicians Union, back in 1932. Uh, it's uh, the first building that was built on the Avenue of the Arts, and it's the first building ever built expressly to be a jazz institution not Lincoln Center, the Philadelphia Cleft Club. It's artist funded, it's artist run, and it grew out and, and it has uh, developed a social club, the Philadelphia Cleft Club, which was founded in 1966 and later became a nonprofit institution in 1972. Uh, it's the third home that originated uh, uh, originally on Broad Street, only about a block away from here. And then it moved to a building on Washington Avenue before coming here to the Avenue of the Arts at Broad and Fitzwater. And it will be celebrating its 20th year on the Avenue of the Arts in 2015. Congratulations. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to introduce our mayor, Michael Nutter. Oh boy. Good evening, everyone. As uh, Helen said, perfect. Because um, she thinks we actually worked on the timing of all this, that I would literally walk in exactly at the moment that she was about to introduce me. Um, some, some days you just get lucky. Um, but um, I was very lucky. Uh, that uh, Helen said yes uh, to the call uh, to come into public service and for that I think we're all not only appreciative uh, but also we're going to be the tremendous beneficiaries. Can we please give our Chief Cultural Officer a big round of applause. <laughs> I've also been very, very fortunate, and it's not just luck, but I've been very, very fortunate to have a great friend a number of great friends in uh, the artistic community, uh, but uh, one who's been uh, tremendously strong uh, in so many, many different ways, even before the beginning, uh, and that's, of course, the chair, the Mayor's Cultural Advisory Council. And I want to recognize the entire Mayor's Cultural Advisory Council, but certainly our great chair, Joe Kluger. Joe? You could actually see Joe if he was not hiding uh, over on the side there. Yeah. yeah, I think that was a stage left appearance. Um, the great staff over at the Office of Arts, Culture, and the Creative Economy, I want to thank them and certainly all of our panel members as well. It's always uh, a great opportunity to be here at uh, the Clef Club uh, and uh, want to ask that we also recognize our great managing director, Don Gardner, uh, for his work. And Clef Club has built an impressive and incredible array of exciting uh, programs, but certainly the music education program, and I want to thank all of you for being here this evening. I want to recognize Maude Lyons, incoming president of the Greater Philadelphia Cultural Alliance, who has joined us. Right. Is she? Right. Okay. I'm always taking directions, always taking directions. Who has joined us this evening from Detroit. Uh, Maude, as you can see, uh, looking around this room, of course, uh, you're joining an excellent collaborative and motivated team. Can we please recognize Maude? Uh, I was um, just, just actually uh, on the phone uh, with uh, Mayor Duggan uh, just the other day, talking about uh, Detroit, a great American city uh, that uh, we need to make sure uh, Detroit uh, comes back. Uh, it's very, very important to America. I also want to again acknowledge uh, Helen, who has been our leader for some time, and has been through her efforts, her persistence, and her focus uh, in our administration. Uh, Helen is very, very focused on strengthening uh, the arts uh, community in Philadelphia through a variety of new models of partnership. 
Uh, and uh, as I ask all of our folks when they first come in the administration, give me a plan in 30 days of how you're going to turn things around. And of course, Helen did. Uh, and um, now it's my responsibility to uh, help make that plan come to fruition. But by working closely with the artistic community, the city, and specifically the Office of Arts, Culture, and the Creative Economy, uh, we know that uh, Helen and her team can leverage powerful and coordinated strategies to support a very creative and vital Philadelphia. Some notable success uh, that we've uh, come to celebrate in the course of this year are detailed in the 2014 annual report. Those include uh, the recent completion of the Venice Island Percent for Art installation by Masayuki Nagasi, the River of Life, and the Public Art Program stewards more than a thousand works of contemporary and uh, historic uh, public art in our city. The Arts and Culture Office showcased 388 artists and art organizations that were exhibited in the Art and City Hall galleries or performed at City Hall Presents. What an incredible series. The Philadelphia Cultural Fund received an additional $1 million in funding, which is administered through the Arts Office. And for that, we should certainly thank uh, the members of Philadelphia City Council and our administration. Anyone getting an additional million dollars these days uh, is, uh, it is quite an achievement. So please give City Council a round of applause. As a result, uh, this year the office distributed 274 grants. The arts and creative sectors are valuable areas of our local, regional, and I would say our state and national economies. From the artists and creative entrepreneurs to the arts education institutions, from the museums and the galleries to the performance venues, our city values all that your efforts can bring in terms of excellence, which in turn enhances Philadelphia's national and international reputation as a premier arts destination. The arts bring our communities together. They celebrate the many unique cultures and individual efforts of the artists. Creative expression is certainly a quite powerful tool that can enrich the lives of our young people and those who are young at heart. The arts help to educate, they inspire, they entertain, but they also cultivate a 21st century workforce. People get jobs through the arts. We know that. We must promote that even more. I've seen firsthand the difference it makes when a child in, uh, engages in a creative process, like the A-plus art exhibit in the Arts and Culture Office Gallery in City Hall, Room 116, or our Brave New Voices Festival that I attended and debuted first time ever an actual poem that I wrote. It was one of the most frightening experiences <laughs> of my life, never to be done again. Another pathway to encourage children actively to participate in artistic uh, ventures is the Poet Laureate and our Youth Poet Laureate programs, both of which uh, we brought uh, to the city during our administration. Our Youth Poet Laureate, Soledad Allah, helps to promote the importance of poetry to her peers and is an excellent representative of the creative talents of our many young Philadelphians. Tonight, our goal is to get everyone involved in the ongoing conversation that can help guide policy and inform the Office of Arts, Culture, and the Creative Economy on what more we can do to support the creative sector. And we need to know your goals, of course, as well. So I want to thank all of you for being here tonight to participate in this very important conversation. And also thank you for the work you do in helping to make Philadelphia the best place for arts, culture, and the creative economy. I also want to thank the folks here at the Clef Club. This is one of our many, many important institutions. There's so much more that, that we can do, but I would also suggest there's so much more that we must do to support the arts, support the people in the arts, make sure that art has the, the uh, that we are supporting it at a level uh, that it is accessible to as many people across the city of Philadelphia, in neighborhoods, uh, in areas that folks may not necessarily think uh, arts uh, and cultural activities are taking place. And so I want to suggest again uh, this idea that I've had for some time about uh, what I've referred to as kind of a cross-cultural tour of the city of Philadelphia. I would love for us to be able to take folks from one section of the city and literally spend an entire day or a weekend just touring another part of the city that maybe you've not experienced or been to 
uh, in uh, your time. Now, I'm a lifelong Philadelphian. I'll be the first to admit there are still a few places in this city uh, that I've not been to, and I quite frankly think that I'm missing out uh, on some things. I've been up to places on the North Delaware uh, that, uh, that I'd never seen before in all of my time uh, here in Philadelphia. There are music performances, artistic performances, uh, and uh, creative activities that are going on in many, many places across the city of Philadelphia. And I think all of us working together can do a much better job at making sure that people can see and experience uh, these things in different neighborhoods and different cultures and different languages uh, that really do help to in, uh, inform the human spirit, but also, I think, make us uh, that much more of that melting pot city that we want to be. So, Art brings people together, it binds people, it crosses uh, a variety of barriers uh, in terms of geography and politics, socioeconomics, uh, race and gender. And so I want to thank you for the richness that you bring uh, to Philadelphia, making this the kind of city where artists want to be, where artists want to come, and they can break through uh, and really express themselves in a variety of ways that maybe you can't do uh, in some other places. There's only one place like Philadelphia. I'm grateful for that. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Philadelphia is fortunate to have the largest and most renowned collection of public art in the nation. And our office is steward of that collection on behalf of our citizens. The public art program consists of conservation and collection management, partnerships on temporary projects, technical assistance, and the commissioning of new site-specific artwork as required by the city's Percent for Art Ordinance. In addition, we're responsible for establishing policy for our different program areas and ensuring that city departments comply with the Percent for Art requirement. In terms of conservation, we undertake the professional cleaning, repair, and restoration of city-owned public art. Projects are selected based on the severity of the condition, the historic and artistic significance, the prominence and visibility of the artwork, and available funding. Some of our conservation funding is provided by the city's capital and operating budgets, and we raise private funds as well. The term collection management refers to the oversight and management of the city's city-owned public art, and includes relocating public art when necessary, addressing vandalism and graffiti, protecting public artwork from potential harm, as well as evaluating and reviewing proposed donations and loans of artwork to the city. So the slides that you're seeing show a sampling of the conservation and collection management projects that we've done over the years, as well as a few completed most recently and just this summer. Since the beginning of Mayor Nutter's administration, we have undertaken conservation and collection management projects totaling over $1 million in city and private funds. In terms of partnerships and temporary projects, we partner with artists and organizations to implement temporary public art projects on city-owned property. And one very exciting current initiative on which we will be partnering is the Bloomberg Philanthropies Public Art Challenge. Right now, we have a call to ideas posted online on our website, which is creativephl.org. And we're seeking innovative and impactful ideas from organizations and artists for temporary projects in any artistic discipline. And these, are due, these ideas are due to our office this Friday, November 14th. Um, a selection panel will select the winning idea to be submitted to Bloomberg by Mayor Nutter in hopes of securing a $1 million grant for an innovative temporary project in partnership with our office. In terms of technical assistance and review, we advise individuals and organizations who are seeking to commission permanent and temporary public art and memorials intended for city-owned property. We also help to guide these proposals through the city's approval process, through the legal requirements and logistical steps, and we serve as a liaison to the public um, between the public and the city's art commission. So that's conservation and collection management activities. Thanks. Jock? Hi. <coughs> My name is Jacques Liu, and I am the project manager for Percent for Art. Um, Philadelphia actually has the first Percent for Art program in the country. It was established in 1959 and has since then produced over 300 pieces of artwork. 
Uh, the percent for art ordinance requires that 1% of the total dollar amount of any construction project that includes city funds be devoted to the commissioning of site-specific public art. The intent of this ordinance is to enhance the city's public environment by incorporating exceptional site-specific artwork. In Percent for Art, we have a very deliberate process to ensure that we make informed and thoughtful decisions in these commissions. When a city capital uh, project triggers the Percent for Art requirement, we begin by meeting with the site's design team and often participate in community engagement events prior to the site's design. Um, as we find potential artists for each commission, we facilitate an independent selection panel where artists present their proposals in person. This panel is supported with advisors from the respective commissioning department, uh, the design team, and community stakeholders. For their proposals, our office pays artists an honorarium that is commensurate with the scope of the project. We recognize that it takes time and effort to develop these projects, and we want to be able to give artists the resources that they need to develop their proposals. Uh, after all, these projects are permanent and will be in our city in, for perpetuity. After a project has been selected, we work with the artists and the involved city department to fully implement the project. This includes all aspects of project management, uh, including contractors, permits, budgets, timelines, and so on. Our office views these commissions as a partnership meant to both expand artistic practices and to meaningfully engage the people of Philadelphia. Over the past few years, project budgets for these commissions have ranged from $10,000 to $275,000. Sites of recent commissions include a new fire station, uh, large and small rec centers, the Philadelphia International Airport, and the new SWAT team slash bomb disposal unit slash canine headquarters. <laughs> um, that's, um, that's, that'll be the last slide. It's pretty, it's pretty great. Um, an, ex an exciting upcoming commission is JFK Plaza, a.k.a. Love Park, over the next two years, the park will undergo a complete renovation where the top layer will literally be peeled away and then remade. Um, as a place that is defined by the artwork, the public artwork, um, the Robert, Love, uh, Robert Indiana Love sculpture, we are excited by what potentially might come forth in the artist's imagination. Thanks. Two. Great. Thanks, Rob. I do have a script. I'm going to stick to the script because I don't want Helen to yell at me again. Later. <laughs> again. But I do want to uh, provide a little shout out because uh, he's not in my notes here. Uh, Alan Edmonds is in the audience and we're going to have a reception tomorrow night at City Hall at the Art Gallery uh, between 5 and 7 p.m. So if you're in the area, a brand new wine workshop is having uh, visual narratives open up tomorrow night. So just a little shout out to, to Alan. Okay, back to the script. <laughs> My name is Tu Huen, and with assistance from an independent exhibitions advisory committee, I organize exhibits at City Hall. Art in City Hall presents exhibitions that showcase contemporary artwork by emerging and professional visual artists from the Philadelphia region. Encompassing a variety of mediums, techniques, and subjects, this municipal program is committed to presenting a diversity of ideas and artistic explorations. The program strives to link visual artists with a larger community by providing the public with greater knowledge and appreciation for their artistic achievements. Since 2008, when the mayor's term began, uh, Art and City Hall has provided exhibition opportunities to approximately 1,500 local artists through thematic juried group exhibits. And with the new opening of the gallery back in 2010, the program expanded to explore how to further provide opportunities to many arts and cultural organizations in the city. Participants have included SIVA and Liquid, Philadelphia Sculptors, I think I saw Leslie Coffin up there earlier from uh, Philadelphia Sculptors, artist collectors from Kensington, numerous art residency programs, graduates from the many local art schools, art centers, and this past spring, a collaboration between our public art program and the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia, just to give you an idea of the broad range of work that we've shown at City Hall. Additionally, as a way to expand opportunities to the creative community, the program has participated in a number of citywide festivals and events. The most recent Design Philadelphia Festival, we hosted the Philadelphia Game Lab for a video gaming day at City Hall. We've showcased fashion designers from the Philadelphia Fashion Incubator at Macy's, uh, CDC. We've presented the process behind designing Deal with Park, working with the Center City District and its architecture partners, Karen, Tim Karen Timberlake and uh, Owen. We've also participated in other festivals, such as Philographica, Art in the Open, PIFA, and Fiber Philadelphia. 
when an important art conference comes to town, such as the National Conference on Education for the Ceramic Arts, or the National Association for Latino Arts and Culture, we strive to connect local artists to this national stage. Uh, the next conference actually will take place this spring involving the Society for American Mosaic Arts. A call for artists is available on our website and submissions are due on January 2nd. As part of our office's commitment to youth access to art, the office regularly highlights student art from the School District of Philadelphia, as well as other special schools and programs, such as the HMS School for Children with Cerebral Palsy, the Pennsylvania School for the Deaf, as well as community organizations that utilize the arts to support youth and community, such as Build a Bridge, the, the Philadelphia Developmental Disabilities Corps, Congresso de Latino, the Village of Arts and Humanities, uh, Muir Arts, of course, as well, and many, many more. This year's National Education Day Arts Week was highlighted by a generous donation of $15,000 in gift cards uh, from Blick Art Materials to support art teachers in our annual a Art School District exhibit. Art in City Hall strives to visually reflect the mission of the Office of Arts, Culture, and the Creative Economy. These are just some of the organizations that we've partnered with just within these past few years. Uh, and th the purpose is to really to reimagine City Hall, the people's building, as a platform and venue to showcase Philadelphia's rich and diverse creative community. My name is Lindsay Stowe, and I am the Research and Policy Associate for the Office of Arts, Culture, and the Creative Economy, where I not only manage research and policy initiatives on behalf of the office, but I also help to develop and manage new creative development programs. Um, the first of our, well, creative development to begin with is um, a program area that we use to help, help artists and arts organizations flourish in Philadelphia. This year, most of our current creative development programs focus on creative activity and participation in the neighborhoods. The first of our current, three current creative development programs is our Poet Laureate and Youth Poet Laureate program. Frank Sherlock, Sherlock who you heard earlier, is our current Poet Laureate who will serve a two-year term through 2015. Soledad Alfaro Ola, who Mayor Nutter referenced, is our Youth Poet Laureate, and she will serve a one-year term through the 2014-2015 school year. Something that's an exciting development with the Poet Laureate and Youth Poet Laureate program is Write Your Block, which is a citywide poetry project developed by the office and inspired by Frank's collection of poems, The City Real and Imagined, which he wrote with C.A. Conrad. This project will run through April 2015 and gives Philadelphians the opportunity to explore their neighborhoods, whether it be their personal landmarks, histories, traditions, and experiences, and how they identify their neighborhoods through poetry. It's a plan to bring poetry to every, every section of Philadelphia and to every language, age group, and skill level. Um, there are ways to participate, and they're listed on creativephl.org slash writeyourblock, as well as a toolkit. And um, there's actually, I think, believe there's a postcard in all of your packets that also reference it for future reference. The second project is Performances in Public Spaces, which is a new pilot regranting program for the spring and summer of 2015, which will directly support artists who are performing in 16 pre-selected sites, whether it be public parks or private sites such as Franklin Payne Skate Park. It'll bring performances to the neighborhoods, increasing accessibility to high quality performances, bringing attention to the dynamic public spaces throughout the city of Philadelphia, and help develop relationships between performers and the public spaces across the city. The application is now open, and information and the materials to apply can be found on creativephl.org as well. The deadline is December 1st. Thirdly and finally, the office is proud to be a supporting partner of the Neighborhood Time Exchange, which is a program with the People's Emergency Center in West Philadelphia, the Mural Arts Program, and Broken City Lab. Neighborhood Time Exchange is a new city residency structure where for every hour an artist spends working in their studio on their own projects, they will in turn provide an hour of volunteer support and service back to the community. The program will offer residencies in a newly renovated storefront in West Philadelphia provided by People's Emergency Center and give artists that free studio space, a monthly stipend, and basic tools and supplies. And in exchange, the artists will provide their skill and time-based resources up to the community members to work on civic projects identified by residents and community-based organizations. This is a great opportunity to help artists connect with community members and for community members to be, have access to resources to help really revitalize their community. 
over 200 artists have applied to the People's Emergency, from over 200 artists have applied to the Neighborhood Time Exchange, and the selection of artists will be announced shortly as the residencies begin in January of 2015. There are applicants from the West Philadelphia area, from Philadelphia, across the country, and as all over the world. Um, and now I will just briefly talk about the research and policy developments of this year, which are primarily based around our leading research initiative, Culture Blocks, which is our free online asset mapping tool that visualizes the assets, the cultural assets and activity of Philadelphia with its geographic, demographic, and economic data. In the past year, the website has been extremely successful with over 8,000 visits and over 3,500 reports generated. There is a data update in progress, and so I believe around Thanksgiving, the 2013 data for all of the information will be on the tool. The tool and the report from the Social Impact for the Arts Project, as well as the reinvestment fund entitled Creative Cultural Ecology, Neighborhood Vitality, and Social Wellbeing, is not only inspiration behind the theme for this year's town hall, but it continues to inform the office's policy strategies and investment developments for the next year, as well as we are using the tool to create investment strategies for the Promise Zone in West Philadelphia, the Choice Neighborhood Initiative in North Philadelphia, and other areas that are of interest to the city of Philadelphia. Finally, I wanted to talk just a little bit about the in-store forgivable loan program, which is a partnership with the Commerce Department to provide a forgivable loan up to $50,000 for food, retail, and most notably creative businesses in the city of Philadelphia. Creative business in this instance can be a nonprofit, an art gallery, or any other type of creative economy business. It is for the enhancement of um, ex expansion of services, business activities, and or upgrading of equipment and is intended to enhance existing commercial corridor and generate foot traffic. Um, the best opportunity for, creative, for the cultural community is to bring this to attention to the landlords, as if a, business, if a creative business is in business for more than five years, the loan is forgiven. So for the cultural economy, for the cultural community, it's a lot less risky for them if they have their landlords um, apply. And now I will turn it over to June O'Neill of the Cultural Fund. Hi. I'm June O'Neill, and um, I'm the executive director of the Philadelphia Cultural Fund, and my assistant and colleague, Michelle Kurica, is way up in the back. She's our tech person today. Um, many of you know and uh, have worked with Michelle. Um, the Cultural Fund distributes the city money that supports arts and cultural organizations in Philadelphia. We use a peer panel process to review grant applications, and many of you have served on our peer panels. We have a board of directors, which is made up of four mayoral appointees, four city council members, and ten members of the community. Our community members represent organizations large and small, established and emerging, and reflect the diversity of the city. We recently celebrated our 20th anniversary, and for that celebration, we honored two women who were largely responsible for the founding of the Cultural Fund, which is um, Kathy Cote, who was then Executive Director of the Cultural Alliance, and Helen Haynes, our current Chief Cultural Officer. And um, since two went, went off script, I'm going to go off script as well. Um, so I would like to recognize, and in the same family, I would like to recognize Anne Edmonds. Um, he recognized her husband, Alan. And I would like to recognize Anne, who is my predecessor at the Cultural Fund. And she was there. She was there for the first 10 years um, building the fund in, in those, those very important years when we were trying to become established. So um, thank you, Anne, for being here this evening. Um, the board of the Cultural Fund took the anniversary, the 20th anniversary, as an opportunity to reflect. And they wanted to make sure that the fund continued to provide the best possible services for the community. So we engaged in some strategic planning and included in part of that strategic planning was a survey of our grantees. So 300 plus organizations were surveyed, and the questions included fun, um, the questions included um, asking about the fund's value, not just the grants themselves, um, but asking about what the fund did for organizations in addition to that. Um, it also included some practical questions about the grant process itself. 
And an astonishing 87% of organizations responded to the survey. We were pleased to learn about what things matter most to you and ways that we might help you. Um, we um, learned that it takes too long to complete our application, and while we <laughs> and and the CDP is not our fault. We have you know. <laughs> Um, while we tried to make the application leaner, um, it's not possible for us to make it too lean because there's so much information that we need. Um, so how we responded to that is that we instituted a three-year grant for general operating funds. So it still takes too long to complete the application, but at least you only have to do it once every three years. Um, yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. So um, we also knew that some organizations work on a project by project basis and that general operating support might not be appropriate for them. And so we used the opportunity of kind of refitting our grants um, to offer um, annual project grants for those organizations for, um, for which um, a project grant is more appropriate. Um, some organizations needed more help capacity-wise, and so we um, offer some limited um, technical assistance grants. And this year, by partnering with LaSalle Nonprofit, um, Bookminders, and the Arts and Business Council, we have been able to provide the expertise needed for um, these organizations to continue the work that they do on um, a stronger level. Uh, we broadened our approach with regard to fiscal sponsors, Understanding that not all new arts organizations intend to incorporate as 501c3 nonprofits. So we are using fiscal sponsors in our grant making more than ever. Um, and we learned that you want more opportunities to network. So we'll be convening a series of brown bag lunches so that you have a chance to meet and learn from your peers. Another goal that emerged from our strategic planning is a uh, higher profile for the Philadelphia Cultural Fund. We want more people to know who we are and what we do. So this past year, we were successful in highlighting your work and successes um, in neighborhood papers and on newsworks. Your stories became our stories. Um, we also needed to do more advocacy and we launched two social media campaigns this year, What Philly Arts Do and Restore Arts Funding PHL. The latter we did with the help of the Cultural Alliance, which culminated in the inaugural Philadelphia Arts Advocacy Day. Together with the Cultural Alliance and Groundswell, we filled the council chambers during budget testimony. Also on that day, 11 grantee organizations presented pop-up performances in the halls and stairways of City Hall. And um, it was fabulous. Um, as a result, our budget was restored to over $3 million. So thank you, everybody who participated. So this restoration allows us to reinstate the Youth Arts Enrichment Grants. Um, these are grants of up to $50,000 to um, provide funds for programs for youth in and out of school. And the guidelines and applications for the Youth Enrichment Grants um, will be available in January 2015. The Cultural Fund is able to do what it does because we have an engaged board engaged committees made up of board and non-board members, and we have a community who gives of their time and talent to serve as volunteer peer panelists. This year, 100 volunteers are going to serve on the peer panels. Um, so the Philadelphia Cultural Fund is your fund. Thanks. And I'll turn it over to Pam. Thank you so much, June, and thank you everyone for coming. It's, um, I'm Special Projects Coordinator for the Office of Arts, Culture, and Creative Economy, and it has been a pleasure playing this town hall for you with my colleague, Betsy Riley, who's off here in the wings, stage directing for us. So do you want to make an appearance? <laughs> no, but we'll see her out and about. So um, also, it has been a pleasure communicating with many of you every day several times a day as Create a PHL on Twitter and Instagram and Create a Philadelphia on Facebook, Flickr, and Tumblr. 
In fact, the Office of Arts, Culture, and Creative Economies website, creativephl.org, is a Tumblr that allows you to like, share, and reblog its entries. CreativePHL.org has grown from a blog to a website full of resources from the latest Arts Commission agenda, feature profiles of arts organizations, art and city hall exhibition pages, um, to online submission forums for the latest percent for art and call for artists. CreativePHL.org allows us to keep you updated on not only the work of the office, but also what is happening in the Philadelphia cultural community as a whole and the resources that are available to support it. Now, to bring your attention to tonight, I want to encourage you to become engaged in the conversation this evening by using hashtag PHL Arts Town Hall. In the past month leading up to the town hall, we have kicked off the discussion of the theme of cultural ecology online through a series of graphics and questions that have garnered responses from the community. These responses and your discussions online tonight will become a part of our collective story of this town hall, which is available for all to see on Storify. So tonight, take the time for a selfie and join in the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. 